Hello, how's it going? So in this video, I want to look at SIMD, single instruction, multiple data. This is a bit of a strange shape that we've got here. It's not sure how visible this is, but this is a cube of cubes. Each of these little objects is a 3D cube. They're generated, they're generating their positions on a uniform distribution, which basically produces a whole cube of them. And as you can see, this is running really slowly. In a second, I will go and remove the rendering code because the rendering does dominate the speed in this case. And I want to see what we can do with this. So go ahead, close this down. And just for fun, I did the whole, the whole source program in a single file. So we've got this app and it's got these cubes. It's doing instanced rendering. And this is the rendering code here. We go and update the model transform, send that over and then issue an instanced draw call. So if I run this, this is now basically the same thing, but without rendering, still updating under the hood. There we go, we're just clearing the screen. And as you can see that update just the pure update, not the rendering stuff, is happening at about high 700s, low 800 frames per second. That's pretty good, but my game, titled One Million Cubes, is releasing on Steam soon, and I know that the gamers are going to be looking at the frame counter to judge its merit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can speed up the internal update of the cubes. So I'll just get this stuff out of the way. How is this working? Well, we've got some utility functions. That's fine. That's not the focus here. We've got this cube class, and then we've got this world. And we've got 100,000 cubes we're going to generate. And we go along and we randomly generate their positions, their Eulers, and all of that. And all the update function is doing is incrementing the Eulers by the Euler velocity and doing a modulus. That's it. So I'm going to change this so that we're doing SIMD style. Basically, I'm going to store all of the components individually. So instead of having all the yaw, pitch, and roll angles as VEC3s for the Eulers, I'm going to store an array of just all the roll values for the cubes and then a separate array of all the pitch values and a separate array of all the yaw values as well as their increments. And the benefit of that is that I can then step across in strides of eight at a time and do math with those. I should probably do a proper introduction to SIMD. So here's the basic idea. We've got a CPU and a CPU has data registers. It loads data in and then it can pipe that into the ALU to do maths. Now, the idea of SIMD is that we have 200, or we have big, we have big data registers, like for instance, 256 bits, which is enough to store eight single precision numbers. And this is what I mean when I say doing things eight at a time. So we have this really big data register inside the CPU. It loads in data. It has the bandwidth. It can load in eight things at a time and it can add, multiply all that stuff, basically eight for one. But I have rambled enough. So this is going to be a little bit of copy paste because the concept is important, but the execution is repetitive. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to include the SIMD header. This is im intrin because SIMD operations are named intrinsics or co compiler intrinsics because the compiler is supposed to be doing this stuff automatically, but it's bad at it. So we need to issue intrinsics to tell the compiler to use certain assembly operations. Did I say I was going to stop rambling? Okay, so another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just completely get rid of the cube class. It's out of there. We don't need it. And now instead of storing a bunch of cubes, I'm going to store the state of the cubes. So in public, I'm going to have an array 
for each of these values. I'm going to have an array for each of the rotation components and an array for each of the positions. And then the reason I'm putting this private is just because it's a bit annoying when it shows up in autocomplete from other classes. But in the private stuff, I'm going to have arrays for each of the increments for the Eulers. And I'm also going to store some other stuff because this is a pretty fair question. What happens if we request a number of cubes which does not divide by eight? It's a bit of a problem. So the solution is we can take this cube count, we can pad it up to the next number, which is a multiple of eight, and then don't worry about the stuff on the end, that's fine. Just do whatever with it, we can. So what I'm getting at is I'm going to have what I'll call a padded cube count. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to keep track of how many chunks. I'll say eight floats together form a chunk. So I'll have a chunk count. Oh my goodness. Okay, cool. So the first thing I'll need to do is get the padded count. Uh, so I'll say padded cube count. Basically what I want to do is I want to take the current cube count and add on the modulus under eight. Cool. So this will round us up to the next multiple of eight. As it turns out, 100,000 does divide by eight, but this is good practice. So then the number of chunks will be all that memory that I'm allocating divide by eight. How many multiples of eight? Then I can go ahead and allocate all of my arrays. And I will copy paste this because this is a nightmare, but the concept is important. Basically standard malloc stuff. We say, hey, this is how many objects we have. Each of those has to have one float. And yeah, there we have it. Okay, cool. Now this stuff in here is gonna change as well. And yes, I am gonna copy paste this because it's very much just a remix on what we're already seeing. Each of these components of the Eulers, we're gonna bust them out into their individual components and store those in the arrays. So far, so good. Um, I guess for the destructor, we'll need to free all of those arrays. And this is, how many times can I say this today? This is just repetitive. So go ahead and do that. I'll get to that update function in a moment. Uh, I guess I've commented out all the rendering code, but what would that update look like? Down here, this is how that would look. Obviously we won't have a cube. We're gonna rotate this. So we'll go just like that. How simple is that? Just fetch the appropriate component. So this is your, so we're gonna go to cube yours and then roll. So that will be cube rolls and then cube positions. Cool. So we're constructing the matrix. And if we were to do this for real, this would render it. But like I said, that rendering time is going to dominate and squash any performance gains realistically. So I'm just going to show the effect of changing this update function. Okay, so here we are. All right. So, so far, this is sort of updating everything one at a time. How do we update eight at a time? Well, one thing that we do is we take each of those arrays, and these are all float arrays, and we reinterpret them as M256 arrays. So 256 bit chunks. So just, I guess, to put this in context, let's say we've got an array which has 16 floats. We'll view that as an array of 16 floats, but this cast will view it as an array of two chunks. Each of those has eight floats. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump in and this will be a, a time for me to spruik a video that I did a long time ago, a while ago, which is pretty good for this. It's called SIMD in one afternoon. It's a crash course on all the things you can do in SIMD, how to load in data, how to 
add things, do math, do conditional code. It's pretty good. It's like two hours or something. So I'll link that in the video description to go more in depth in this. But uh, what I want to do is I want to, for instance, take my chunk of pictures and this will be now we'll be operating on a chunk basis so per chunk just like that and I'm not going to do the modulus because SIMD doesn't as far as I can see doesn't have a nice way of doing modulus and it's not strictly necessary but I am going to do this operation so this operation would involve sort of multiplying these things together and then adding and this is also called a fused multiply add operation. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go MM256, fuse multiply add, packed single, single precision. And it says, okay, what we need is the first things that we're multiplying. So I'll put in a chunk. This is one single float here. I wanna broadcast that out to a single, um, Put it out into a chunk which is full of those. Does that make sense? Um, but anyway, the way we do that is we go MM256 set one packed single, and this takes in a float as its argument, and it returns a chunk with copies of that float everywhere. Okay, so I want to take this stuff times the the pitch. So I hope this makes sense. What we're doing is we are multiplying this coefficient with the change in pitch, doing that multiply, and then we're adding that result to the pitch. And we're just doing it eight numbers at a time. So we can do the same thing with each of these. So we'll have your Okay. I think that's fine. So remember, previously we were doing about 800 frames per second. Let's see what difference is. Okay, so as you can see, that has now brought the my app, 1 million cubes, to like 7,500 frames per second. Like it's gone up. It's an improvement. Now, like I said, this is just measuring the update time. It's not measuring any rendering time but it does show that that makes a really big difference to that section of the code. Now, just to verify that this is in fact working, we can go back and we can add in that update, the rendering stuff. Again, not super exciting because although the update gets faster, the rendering still takes a long time. There we have it. So it's still about the same time. The issue is that when we get to low frame rates, that's a high frame time. And so we would need a massive time saving to really move the needle in this case, but that's okay. We have demonstrated that SIMD can speed up data processing. So that is it for now. Like I said, SIMD in one afternoon, it's good. I highly recommend it. And yeah, that will be it from me. All the best. Bye.